Hello YouTube. This time we're going to take a look at a system that is not actually mine because I'm not uh, at home or at my dad's place or anything. I'm at my girlfriend's house at the moment. And this is her 2006 Mac Pro 1.1. As you can see, this is the Mac Pro here. And on the front we have nothing very amazing. It's basically just a power button, headphone jack, two USB ports, FireWire 400 and FireWire 800. And of course this nice mesh that uh, they pretty much kept from the design of the Power Mac G5. Oh yeah, I used to own one, I sold it, but uh, anyway. On the back, there's quite a bit more in terms of peripherals. We have the power supply that's up here now. It used to be on the bottom on the G5s. But anyway, we have a couple of expansion slots here. It's full PCI Express. There's a GeForce GTX 560 Ti in there. It's a PC card. It's not been flashed. But uh, these things can take them just fine. It used to have a uh, Radeon X1900 XT in there, but... Uh, this thing is running Mavericks, and that card is not supported. Here on the back, I'm just I'm making this real difficult for myself, I'm sorry. We have three USB ports, currently occupied, for the Apple keyboard and the wireless mouse. Firewire 800, Firewire 400 here. Optical in, optical out. Audio in, audio out. And two gigabit Ethernet ports. And of course, a huge fan area for the memory, most likely, and the CPU cooling. The hottest component of this whole Mac Pro is the memory. It runs at about 75 degrees Celsius, so that's kind of funny. Because quite frankly, the CPUs don't really get that hot. It has a dual, dual core Xeon 2.66 GHz CPUs. Let me just take out the cover here. So you can take a look inside. This is the MSI GeForce GTX 560 Ti Trend Frozer with a gig of RAM. Can't see much in there, but that's not very interesting anyway. Here are all the RAM modules. There are 8 2 GB DDR2 fully buffered DIMMs in here for a total of 16 GB of DDR2. System came with 4 GB for 1 GB sticks. But, uh, I don't know how she did, but she managed to get uh, all these modules, these 8 2 GB fully buffered DIMMs ECC memory for just 30 euros. Yeah, that's amazing. So that's the outside of the machine. So let's boot up the Power Mac here. The Power Mac 1.1 officially supports up to OS 10 10.75 Lion. But this particular unit is running Mavericks. We haven't uh, quite succeeded in uh, getting uh, Yosemite to run without a uh, Chameleon or Chameleon boat bootloader. Yeah, it's called Chameleon. I keep on mispronouncing that. So, you know, that's not really going to work. <laughs> My girlfriend does not want to get Chameleon because it is a genuine Mac and not a fucking Hackintosh. That's what she said. So, so she doesn't want all that Hackintosh uh, bullshit. And of course, uh, I forgot about the super drives on top. There are two of them in there. Okie dokie, let's turn on the mouse so I can actually move anything. And here we are at the Mavericks login prompt. Let me get the password. Failure. If I'm not mistaken, that should be the password. There we go. And the Power Mac is in fact up and running. There's a couple of hard drives in there. I'll uh, take a look at those. But uh, this is the About Mac screen. 2 times 2.66 GHz dual core Intel Xeon, 16 GB of 667 uh, MHz DDR2 at BDIM. There we go. More detailed info there. Video GeForce GTX 560 Ti, properly detected. It was 10.10.9.4. We have a 500 gig drive as boot drive, 500 gig as a secondary drive, as the backup drive for the OS image. And you have 640 gigabyte drive 
that's currently used for boot camp because this thing is dual booting with Microsoft Windows 7 Ultimate 64 bit. That's mostly for if she wants to play games. All the other things uh, she wants to do on the system are just done under Mac OS X. Because as we all know, for regular tasks, Mac OS X is usually a better option on Macs. <laughs> and actually in general, this is in my opinion, but uh, that's a whole different story. I'm not going to fanboy here on any operating systems. Because I'm still uh, a Windows user for the most part, so... Although I do like Mac more. But that's just personal preference. So what else is there to show on this Parmac 1.1 from 2006 that's running Mavericks? Although the fact that it's running Mavericks by itself is pretty amazing. You just need to uh, modify the boot EFI file. The problem with these Macs is um, the Mac Pro 1.1 and 2.1, which is the 8-core version of this, are, uh, are not fully 64-bit compatible. They have 64-bit CPUs, but the... EFI, that's the uh, that's the firmware that's, that they're running, is not 64-bit capable. These Macs, so the 1.1 one one and the 2.1, one, the one, um, have EFI 32-bit, and the 3.1 and up have 64-bit EFI, so they can still run Lion, Mountain Lion, Mavericks, Yosemite, etc. So these systems are way more powerful than some of the crappy Macs that can actually run Mavericks and uh, Yosemite just fine. For instance, 2 GHz Core 2 Duo machines like the early 2009 MacBook I own, and even the late 2007 MacBook Pros can run Mavericks just fine. But these systems are a hell of a lot more powerful, and they never got the update, not even to Mountain Lion, so that's weird. But this one is running Mavericks, as you can see here, just fine. Everything works, no hiccups anywhere, no bugs, no glitches, no hangs, nothing to speak of. It's a very responsive system. Everything seems to work just fine. You can just browse the web just fine, no glitching anywhere. It's all perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's a great time to end the video, because they're starting construction out there. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video somewhat, and I thank you all for watching this video on my girlfriend's Mac Pro 1.1.